of Hebrews chapter 12 11 through 13 I'll read from the New American Standard Bible you can follow along whichever translation you have with you or on our screen book of Hebrews chapter 12 11 through 13 the Bible says all discipline for the moment seems not to be of joy but instead sorrow yet to those who have been trained by it afterwards it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness verse 12 says therefore strengthen the hands that are weak and the knees that are feeble and make path straight for your feet so that the limb which is lame may not be put out of joint but rather be healed for a few moments I want to sit under the title discipline over atrophy father we thank you for your goodness we thank you that when we approach you we are able to approach you as father so father we ask that you would give to us what it is we need today that you would speak to each soul in this space what it is that you have purposed for their life and for their hearts God I ask that you would fill this space with your presence so that we are unable to leave here the way we came God if anything outside of you seeks to come out of me I pray that you would sit me down shut me up I don't need to be seen God I don't need to be heard you do so lift yourself up in all of our sight and cause me to be a spotless vessel so all may see more of you God and less of me this is our prayer in Jesus name for his sake we pray amen discipline over atrophy man y'all gonna get mad at me today so 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 some of you guys are like me some of you guys are uh retired pro athletes yeah 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 I mean this is this is Akron you know what I'm saying this is accurate. So everybody, you know everybody. Man, yo, I was, yeah, man. I do that 40 in like three. You know what I'm saying? Everybody in Akron plays some kind of sport. Everybody in Akron, you know, you play ball, you play football, you, you know, you ran track. You know, whatever it is you did, you know what I'm saying? You, you got, your, you got your, 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 your PRs, you got all your records, you know what I'm saying? There, there was a time where... Where, where you were the joint. I mean, like, everybody was talking about you. You'd walk through the halls of your high school, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let them in over your shoulder, you're just strolling. <laughs> Ladies looking at you, gentlemen looking at you, and just, I mean, can't control their legs. You walk by, you just, <laughs> you that thing. Everybody, man. But, but, but I want you to focus in on something. Uh, 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 I use the word former. See, most of us, we, we used to play ball, and, you know, we, we used to run, I'm saying, and, and we used to be, you know, top three defensive end, I'm saying, we, we, we used to be that corner, you know what I'm saying? Nobody get around us. We, we, woo, we were that wide receiver, but something happened, and some folk will say old age. Some folk will, they'll, 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 they'll blame it on old age. But I want to suggest that it could be something else. I, I mean, if old age is playing a factor, it's playing a factor in combination with something else. I, 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 I want to suggest that the reason we are former athletes is because we don't put in the grind like we used to. I mean, I mean let, let's, let's just be real. Where are my, where my track stars at? Where are you guys at? Here we go, here we go, here we go. Yes, sir. When's the last time you got up in the morning and ran a 400? No? Okay, all right. How about, how about, anybody here use the box? 
I got some clean hands. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. When's the last time you went into a gym and put in some work on a bag? Ooh, 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 ooh. We, we, we in Akron, so let's do this. Where my football players at? There we go. Here we Church full of them. Full of them. When's the last time your pinky toe has seen a field? Nah? Anybody in here still own a pair of cleats? Watch this thing. Watch this thing. We, we, we kind of fell off. We, we stopped doing those things. And it's cool because when we were young, you know, we were hot-headed. You know, we, 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 didn't, we didn't recognize the things that we did to maintain the place that we were. So we attributed it to youth. Yeah, when I was younger, I used to. Yes, when you were younger, you used to. But because when you were younger, you would be on the field three hours a day, every day of the week, every month of the year. You were grinding. You were disciplined. Put in work. Man, so the time of year is coming now. You're going to start hearing this phrase, two words. You're going to start hearing them all the time. Summer body. You can start hearing it. Are you going, I'm going to the gym. What are you going to the gym for? Girl, get my summer body. Everybody trying to get right. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so um, me and Jazz, uh, we're, we're gym rats. I say we're, and she's going to look at me weird. See, she's doing it right now. Um, because while she's a gym rat, I used to be a gym rat. But I'm not so much of a gym rat anymore as I am a gym tourist. I might have like one of those, you know, weekend passes. Actually, I go so little now that I no longer have a membership. When we go, I have to go with her as her guest. It's how little I, little I grind now. And, and, and I noticed something, man, like... Everybody wants to get right. Everybody wants to be fit, you know what I'm saying? Everybody wants to, you know, you, husbands, you guys are sitting here? Okay, so you, you guys still want, you know, when, when your spouse walks into a room, you still want to, you know, take off your shirt, and you, you came in, you mowing the lawn. You still want to, you know, pull off your shirt, have the glisten. And, you know, y- your wife of 20, 30, 40 years, you want her to see you and be like, oh, clutch, clutch and pearls, she don't got, you know, you, we, we, we still want to impress we still want to do it, but something about getting up five in the morning before work or 11 o'clock in the, in, the, in the evening after we get home, put the kids to bed and take care of it. Something about, you know, getting out of my bed, putting on my gear, dragging myself to the gym. <sighs> I got to deal with these people in here. Everybody wants to talk. Go to find these, 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 these heavy pieces of metal and pick them up repeatedly over and over again. Or, or to stand on, to stand on this, this, this humanized, mechanized mouse wheel and run for an hour. Something about that doesn't sit well. And because it doesn't sit well, and because it's tiresome, and because it's tedious, and because we don't want to do it, and we don't do it, we can never see the results that we're dreaming about because we're not disciplined. See, it ain't really old age. Brother Clark still does 100 push-ups a day. 96? Seven? Because he's disciplined. Amen. Pastor, I tell people all the time, you just, you know, just move your body. He puts in work. He's disciplined. Amen. And, 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 and the, the writer of Hebrews, he seems to be on a similar trend. He, he, he's talking to these Christians in this letter, in, in, in this epistle, and, and he begins um, our particular story. Uh, 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 our text starts in verse 11. He says this phrase, which it seems like, like, he, like he's sitting right here, looking at all of us in our former spectacle, and saying to us, all discipline for the moment 
seems not to be joyful. Can, can we put it in, in, in 2016? All discipline is the worst. It's the absolute worst. It's tiresome. It's, it's, it's hard. It's continuous. Like you, you, you can't just squat once and get right. You got reps, and then you got sets, and then you got days. You, you, you squat forever. You, you, you know those guys, they, they go to the gym, and they'll, they'll, they'll lift, you know what I'm saying, on their bicep curl. They'll do like, you know, 10, 10 reps, one set. Put it down, go stand in the mirror. Looking for the bicep that's not there. All kind of angles. See, see it, 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 the reason why it's the worst is because it's not something you see immediately. Discipline requires stress and pressure at a repeated intense frequency. I'm going to say that thing again. It requires stress and pressure at a repeated intense frequency. You got to grind. And so because of the very nature of discipline, that thing sucks. It's the worst. He says, yet to those who have been trained by it, afterwards, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. I want to break this thing down. I I, I might preach in a second. Let me just talk to you for a little bit. See, 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 in the beginning and in the process... It's terrible. I don't like to do it. But if you're trained, he says, by discipline. If discipline is your coach, if you are trained by discipline, he says, it will yield peaceful fruit of righteousness. If you make this thing plain, some of y'all right now, if we just say, all right, y'all, let's do 10 push-ups. I heard a uh, I heard a mm, I heard a mer- I, Listen, bruh, pastor, it ain't happening. No, no, sir. Okay, well, let, let, let me get one, <laughs> bruh. But if you, if you, if you get there and, and, and do your half and you drop on your face and say, I did half, Lord, and get up tomorrow and do another half, and then the day after that and do another half and you finish that half and realize, wait, I can do another quarter. And then, and then that half and a quarter turns to a whole and you can do one push-up. And next week your one push-up turns to two. And three weeks later your two push-ups turns to five. And, 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 and the thing is, you don't notice it as it's happening, but at a certain point you begin to have peace as you do one. See, the, the, the thing that was difficult for you in the beginning becomes easy. You have, you have a peace about it. You've, you've mastered it. Your muscles have become used to it. It becomes simple for you. to It, it, it bears the peace of righteousness. Paul, sa- uh, he, he informs us here that as you work in this thing, it will bring forth the peaceful fruit of righteousness. There's, there's, there's something to be gained from doing this. There's, there's something to be gleaned from this process. There will be something awesome at the end of it as you continue to work, but that thing's gonna be the worst to get to. And the reason why, we said something like this similar when we spoke about the seer, you guys remember? If you don't recall that sermon, it's on our podcast on YouTube. Bless the Lord. Um, we said something similar to this in the seer. The process brings forth glory as the process is followed through. The reason why, we said this with the seer, the reason why people do not see the results in their lives that they're, that they're looking for 
is because they do not have the discipline to endure the process. So much your mama used to pray. She prayed out in heaven. I can't do it. It's because you don't have the discipline to endure the process. I, 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 I can't, I can't, I don't know how, 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 to, how, how, to, how to be a, a parent to my child. It's because when it gets difficult, you throw the towel in. Don't have the discipline. See, because see, the text says it is sorrowful. Not joyful. It is sorrowful. In your marriages, you're going to find out. If you ain't married, you're going to learn today. Sorrowful. Painful. Listen, I love my wife to death. Marriages work. It requires discipline. And if you can't tough it out, when you wake up in the morning and roll over and the first thought in your head is, ugh. If you are willing to tough it out, discipline, you will never see the results that you're looking for. It's, 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 it's work. But it will bring forth peaceful fruit of righteousness, text says. So he says now in verse 12, he says, therefore... He says, in light of this, because of, remember I said this? Every time you see the word therefore, you want to go back and see what it's there for. So we've done that. He says, therefore, in light of this, strengthen or make straight the hands that are weak and the knees that are feeble. Strengthen the hands that are weak and the knees that are feeble. Let me put this thing in 2016 modern day English. Grind. Yes. 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 He says, therefore, grind. Your hands are weak, strengthen them. Your knees are feeble, strengthen them. That you, you, you have to build up the endurance. You have to work the process. You have to be disciplined. He says, grow in this thing. Make them straight. So, so, so let's, let's, let's unpack this thing. Because if you were in the gym, you wouldn't go in the gym your first day. I'll say first day back because we former, you know. Amen. You don't go in the gym and run over <laughs> and grab you a 150-pound barbell. That's how you die. Amen. Amen. You don't do that. You got to tuck in your pride. You got you to you walk over and pick you up the five pound. Yes, sir. Do, do, do some deadlifts on a 25. You, 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 but, 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 but your weak back, your weak legs, your weak shoulders, your weak forearms, your weak core, because of the stress and the pressure repeatedly, intensely, will begin to grow and those feeble things will be strengthened. After about a week of your 25-pound deadlifts, when you walk in there, you'll realize, oh, I can do 50. But it doesn't happen unless you start the process. I'm talking to some folk who are looking to experience the power of God in their lives and they are unable to do the things that they dream that they should be able to do. Pastor, I can't pray for my family. I, I, I don't know how these folk used to pray for an hour. Well, do you try praying for five minutes? I can't pray for five minutes. Well, do you try praying at all today? Sit down somewhere and pray. Fall on your face and say, God, I don't know how to pray. Amen. Amen. You got to take your feeble self and begin the process. And as you work, you will strengthen it. You want to pray for an hour? Pray for one minute. Yes, 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 yes. You want to learn how to pray for your family? Pick one person. Yes. Because you'll write their name on a wall and say, God, please be with my wife. And then the next day, your wife will come home and talk about the terrible times she had on the job. And so you'll say, God, please be with my wife and her boss. Now you're praying for two. 
but it will not happen until you fall on your face and do the, the reason why your knees are feeble is because you don't use them. And you're trying to get by on the glory of your former religiosity. You ain't that no more. You can't get by on what your mama used to do for you. Yeah, I was in church my whole life. My mama used to sing in the choir. I used to sit there where she, she was on the usher board and she did this and she did. What are you doing now, former? Put in work. He says, your hands are weak, strengthen them. Your knees are feeble, strengthen them. How do you do it? Use them things. Strengthen them, he says. He, 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 he talks about this process of building. And then he says in verse 13, make straight paths for your feet. So that the limb which is lame, may not be put out of joint, but rather healed. Now, now people like to wrestle and debate about what this text could possibly be talking about, what the author is saying in this portion of the text. Uh, they, they, they say, well, he, he's describing a person who, who possibly, you know, their legs don't function. Maybe they didn't function from birth. Maybe they, they were never, never able to bear weight. Maybe they were born with a disability or something wrong with them. But because of the way the author structures the text and what he says, he gives the impression he gives the impression that whatever is going on can be dealt with by usage. This causes people to think that what the author is describing here is not some lifelong condition that you can't deal with and a miracle happens. But this is something that has come over time due to neglect. They believe that he's describing atrophy. See, atrophy is what happens when you have a particular muscle group that you do not use ever. The muscles begin to wither away. They begin to shrivel down. They become shells of their former selves until they are unable to bear the weight that they used to. You got a person who's in a coma, and they're laying in their beds for several years. When they wake up, they will find that they are unable to stand or even walk because the muscles in their legs have had several years of non-usage. And when they're not being used, they go away. You could put that in another sermon by itself. When they're not being used, they go away, atrophy. So Paul says that the limb that is lame, he says, instead of it coming out of socket, instead of it shriveling to the point that the muscles and sinews and tendons and ligaments cannot hold it in place and it comes out, you should instead use it that it might be healed. See, 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 here's the thing with atrophy. Atrophy, more times than none, will occur specifically because of non-usage. Now, it may be, well, I have pain, so I don't use that because I have pain. That's a great reason to not use it. However, I need you to understand that in not using it, it will go away. Well, it's, it's difficult for me, Pastor. I, I don't, you know, I, I can't do this. Like, you know, I, 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 I understand that, and that's great. Good reason to not use it. But I need you to understand that if you do not use it, it will go away. Well, well, Pastor, I, I just had surgery. I, I, I can't, I can't, you know, I'm not, okay. And, and that's great, wonderful, wonderful reason. But I need you to get this thing. If you don't use it, it'll go away four surgeries on this knee. And because I don't want to not have usage of this leg, I run and I squat because if I don't use it, 
it will go away. When I, when I, when I, when I, when I finally recovered and, and, and I'd gone through my therapy, I had one huge leg and one tiny leg because when you don't use it, it goes away. And that tiny leg, it prevented me from being able to stand straight. It, it made me even, when I walked, I walked with a limp and I, I walked at, a, at, a, at an angle because I, I couldn't support myself fully on this leg as I could on this one. I was imbalanced. I was, I was out of sick. I could not do what I was supposed to do. Paul says, your hands are weak, strengthen them. Your knees are feeble. He says, strengthen them. He says, and make straight paths for your feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get up and, and, and plan a course and, and map out a trajectory and be able to move in a certain direction. Make straight paths, not crooked ones. Make straight paths for your feet. So the limb that is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather that it would be healed. I need you to use the stuff you got. Or you will lose it. Church full of folk. Oh yeah, I used to sing. Why you used to? Could it be that you haven't used the gift God has given you for so long that the muscles are atrophied? Yeah, I used to know the Bible like front and back. Oh, I could Genesis, Exodus, I, I run through it all. Well, why used to? Could it be that you haven't used the muscles and they've atrophied? See, 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 it's not just physical things. You will lose the things that God has given you because of a lack of usage of those things. But the author of this text is calling us to this notion of discipline over atrophy. I don't want you to be feeble. I don't want you to be weak. I don't want you broken down. I want you instead to be disciplined. Well, 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 well why? That's the question that comes to my mind. After all this great stuff, cool. Why? Why must I be disciplined? The text says, and I know we don't have it on the screen, but work with me in the text. Chapter, uh, verse 10, it says, they disciplined us for a short time, speaking about our fathers, our, our earthly fathers, disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them. But he, God, dis- disciplines us for our good and so that we may share in his holiness. I need someone to get this thing. You, the, the discipline that God is trying to put you through now, the work and the stress that you're going through right now is for your good. Because if you are undisciplined, you will not be able to do the things that you have been called to do. If you are undisciplined, you will be a divider in your home instead of a uniter. If you are undisciplined, you will be a person who brings stress instead of easing stress. If you are undisciplined, instead of being light, you will be darkness. If you are undisciplined, you will be tasteless salt. If you are undisciplined, you will hide your light under a basket. If you are undisciplined, people will not be able to look at you and see Christ in you. If you are undisciplined, the power and authority that God said we would have, you will not be able to use. If you are undisciplined, you can call the name of Jesus all you want without a relationship with him. Ain't no demon fleeing. Ain't no demon trembling. Ain't nobody scared of you. They'll look at you and say, Jesus, I know. Paul, I'm aware of. But who are you? If you are undisciplined, you are a walking, useless pile of person who cannot operate in the sphere that God has called you to. But he said, I want you to be disciplined. Instead of atrophy, I want discipline for you. Instead of failure, I want success for you. But you got to be disciplined. You you, want to sit in the palace? You got to walk through the pit first, Joseph. You got to spend some time in the prison. I need to work some things in you. You got to be disciplined. You want to alter some laws and change some rules, Daniel? Cool. I'm going to put you in a lion's den first. I need you disciplined. You will do amazing things. But first, you got to do some work. You want to be king of Israel? That's awesome. 
awesome, David. You will spend some time in the wilderness fleeing for your life. Your prayers for help will become songs that people will sing, but you're going to be disciplined first. Israel, I cannot allow you to walk into the land of Canaan until you have first gotten rid of the stuff in you that drives you to atrophy. I need you disciplined. I wish somebody got this, but God does not want you to think this is something that you do on your own. God wants you to understand I too am disciplined. So what he decided to do was that instead of instead of allowing someone else to do it for him, he would step down here and take care of the problem of sin in your life himself. He would stay in a garden and look up to heaven and say, Father, if there is some other way that this thing can be done, but I'm not going to allow this in the atrophy. I'm going to be disciplined. So not my will, but your own. He, he, he walked and, and carried his own cross. And when they hung him from that tree and stretched his arms wide and crowned him with thorns, the Bible tells us that everybody and their mama around him was commanding, was shouting, was jeering, come off the cross. If you are God, save yourself. Come down from it. But he decided that he would be disciplined in his purpose so that he could work good in us and give us the peaceful fruit of righteousness. I wish somebody got this thing. God desires for his people because it exists in himself that we would have discipline over atrophy. I wish somebody was with me today. Discipline over atrophy. Some of us are noticing that we can't walk straight. I got a limp, God. I seem to turn to one side. I want to suggest to you that it may be because of a lack of discipline in your life. Some of us can't figure out how to spend time with God. Can't figure out how to, how, how, how to just sit in his presence. It may be because of a lack of discipline in your life. Some of us are looking back and realizing that we are becoming the awful parents or awful spouses that raised us. And we are now raising children. And dealing with spouses in the same way we watched us deal with. It may be because of a lack of discipline in your life. Maybe shaken, fallen down, because we're unable to stand. We, 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 we can't do work. In our communities, we, we, we can't speak to people. We can't pray for people, whether they know it or not. We, 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 we don't have it in us to be able to open our mouths and testify of the goodness of Jesus. We can't be the hands of God because our hands are too weak. Can't be a praying church because our knees are too feeble. It may be because of a lack of discipline in your life you're noticing no good thing is coming to you it may be because of a lack of discipline in your life I have this phrase I say it often don't people get mad at me when I say it so I don't bear down too much but I want you to go home with this thing the Bible makes it, makes it clear that your gifts will make room for you. But I always like to ask the question, when people say that to me or say it to someone else, your gifts will make room for you. Look look at someone and say, your gifts will make room for you. Your gifts will make room for you. Your gifts will make room for you. I always like to ask the question, yes, your gifts will make room for you. When your gifts make room for you, will you have the character to keep you in the places where your gifts put you? Look at someone and say, your gift's not enough. Your gift's not enough. Your gift's not enough. Your gift's not enough. It's not enough. The only way you 
can develop the character to keep you in the places your gifts put you is if you're disciplined. Is if you're disciplined. Is if you're disciplined. I don't need anybody to stand. I don't need anybody to come forward. I don't need any hands raised. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. You recognize right where you are that you are not disciplined in your life. You're not disciplined in your walk with God. You aren't disciplined, but you want to be. Take this time right now and ask the Lord to birth in you a desire for His discipline, a desire for His good in your life that you might see the peaceful fruits of righteousness. Take this time, take a moment and ask God. Like you. 